Hello to you and thank you for watching my video today. As always, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or would like me to cover something else in greater depth or something that I have not, please put it into the comments. Today, I'm going to go over how to back up PHP IPAM on a schedule. The reasons for doing this are many. And some of the obvious ones are the server database got corrupted, a, a pipe burst, and your server got wet, and now you need to restore from backup. Whatever your reason, I'm going to go through how to back up PHP IPAM and schedule it. First off, I want to note that you can back up PHP IPAM directly from PHP IPAM. You can actually go into the administrator settings here if you've logged in as administrator go to the import export and you can actually dump the database right here and there it is it's in my downloads folder if i open it let me see here i can open it mm. I open that, I believe it's in my downloads folder. Yeah, there it is. And as you can see, this is my database and this is the file. So I don't want to have to remember to come in or create a note in Outlook or something to remind me to do this. So I want to actually automate this. So in order to do this, I would have to obviously, you know, remember to do this. Now, if you watch some of my other videos, you will see that I installed Webmin, which is this, onto my server. That's because I like to mouse and not type it that much. Through Webmin, you can go to the servers page, and we can actually go to the MariaDB server itself. And as you can see, there's the PHP IPAM. That's this with the tables, indexes, everything. If I go inside, right, I can actually back up the database, or I can actually back up the entire databases, which would be the system databases as well as PHP IPAM. Now, if I do this, I'm going to create, I'm going to have to, see, I already have this folder. And then I would go like this, and I call it PHP IPAM. Let's see. And we'll call it, save it as that. I'm selecting all my tables there on my backup options. I could have it gzip or bzzip2. I would leave all this default. And I could create a simple hourly snapshot. Now, the drawback to this, right, is I don't have any way to create like a daily here. And so if I go and back this up, let's say I do a simple, uh, we'll say uh, daily at midnight, I hit save. And let me see here. Yeah, I forgot to click that. So we have all this. I had to turn on the scheduled. It's scheduled to be a simple, and we'll say daily. And if I hit save, right, it's enabled. So if we go back to here and we go to backup, we'll see that this information's there. Now, the nice thing is I can just back it up right now, right? And if I go to tools and I go to file manager, And we look in here, there it is, and it's been zipped or 
gzipped. Now I should probably add that, but if I needed to, because there's no gz, right? So I need to add that field. Now, if I go back here, let me go to right here. So I'd want to put dot gz. We hit back up now, right? If I go back to here, right? And then if I want to extract it, I would just hit extract now. Anyways, this isn't a preferable way for me. I would actually prefer to do this a little bit differently. And because I want to keep maybe 30 days worth of files. So to do that, I'm going to log into my server and let me zoom in a little bit here so it's not super tiny. And what I want to do is I want to first off, I want to create a cron job. Now I'll do the cron job in webmin, but what I want to demonstrate to you here is that I don't want to have my credentials posted in cron because other one our security team would yell at me if they saw that so to do that i'm going to create a file called uh, mysql 2.cnf and then i'm going to go and edit this file And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use from the entities that can actually access the database. So these are, these are the legitimate users. So, or sorry, user and password, sorry, that can use and access the database. You could also use root, but I don't want to use that here. Next. The only other thing is I need to uh, set the permissions or restrict the permissions on this file. So I'm setting it to 600 and we're pretty much done. Now I, I could, what I can, can do here now is I can go back to webmin and system and go to cron jobs. And as you can see, I've already created my cron job right here. Now I'm going to open that in notepad so I can explain it a little bit better and then show you. So uh, here we go. So let's zoom in. So right here, cron is going to pass my SQL dump. It's going to have the defaults. It's going to use the password file I just created, MySQL2. PHP IPAM is the database, right? So let's come back here, go down to servers, right? So we're telling it to use that database. We're telling it to use gzip and to compress. And then this is the folder where we want to put the file. Now you'll see this is the folder. This is the file. And then I have an underscore. And then what I'm telling it to do is to put the date and then the hour, the minute, and the seconds. And then we're going to end it with a back.gz. Now, if I do that and we go to system, go to our schedule cron job, and I can just run this right now, right? So let's go here. It's being run as root, but the actual password is being done here. You can see that it's uh, times that it's scheduled for is 2300 hours. 
which was what I determined, which is 11 p.m. And if I hit run now, you'll see that no output. But if I go down here to tools and I go to file manager, you'll see there's the file now. It's that so the date, then the time. This was at, done at 2 o'clock and 31 minutes and some seconds there. Now, I wanted for completeness to also show you how to do this from the CLI. So to do that, let me first go to system and I'm going to remove the cron job. So I'm going to delete this. And this is the cron job that I created in uh, down here in the server itself. So I'm going to delete that job as well. So now I have no jobs there. So let's go here. And what I'm going to do is delete this one and this one. So I have no um, data bases backups and my DB backups. So let's go back over here. And what I'm going to do now is we're going to basically do a cron tab dash E. And what I want to do is open this and then I'm going to copy and paste but let me bring up notepad real fast here because I want to note the difference. So in notepad, you'll notice this is the command that we passed to through the cron in webmin. Now this is what we have to pass oops, to through uh, cron tab from the CLI and the thing you want to note is the slashes so if we do it through uh, the CLI we have to add these slashes and I'm going to just hit paste and then I'm going to do a um, colon and a right so it's been written and then I'm going to hit quit now I'm going to go back to my cron tab or cron jobs and look at it and there it is and if I go in and I run it you'll see it's at 2300 hours just like I had before and I was set to 023 right so 2300 hours if I run the job everything ran looks like if I go to tools file manager there it is. And I can also confirm that from the command line. If I do a and the, right there's my file and it's been compressed. Well, I hope this made backing up PH a little I hope I made understanding how to pack back up the PHPI PAM database on Rocky Linux 9 on a schedule a little easier for you. Finally, I wanted to also thank you for watching my video and always like and subscribe and add some comments of what you liked or what else you would like me to cover. Thank you and have a great day. Bye for now.